Solicare now supports the use of STL files where we can work directly on the STL file itself without saving it as a SolidWorks part. If we open up SolidCam and New, you'll see we have a new option here called Milling STL. This is specifically meant for working directly on STL files. STL files are files that were scanned from a part uh, and translated into a graph 3D graphic form called STL. When we start, we simply start by milling STL and then we go into our model name and we browse for the part itself. In this particular case, I've already created an STL file called mouse.stl and I'll simply open it and I'll give it a name. We'll call it mouse1. And then I'll simply say OK. You'll note that it is being automatically imported into our assembly file, and this is the actual STL file. Now, to continue on, of course, we choose our uh, controller that we'll be using, and then we go into our coordinate system. Now, choosing our coordinate system over here is a little different because this is an STL file. This is not a solid part. This is not a surface. So it has to recognize it in a different way. So what we use is the option of something called normal to curve. What normal to curve does is that I put my part exactly according to the view that I wanted to have from the Z axis. And then I capture that view as my coordinate system. So let's say I want to have my view of the part this way as you see right now. I'll simply click on normal to current view and then click on capture current view coordinate system. By doing this I've automatically created a coordinate system for the part itself. All I have to do now is simply accept this and what's happening right now it's automatically building a stock around the part as you can see here now it's also actually made a stock around the part and it's also created a target automatically around the part. Now this is the position that I have the part in, an isometric position, but you'll note that my home position is at a different point over here. Okay, even though it's in the right directions, but I may want to move my, my home point actually to the box itself. So what I can do now is simply go back to define and on the position that I have here, simply right click and do edit and I can now edit my coordinate system. And in this particular case, I use the option of define, whereas I define my origin, define my x direction, and then define my y direction, and then simply accept that as it jumps over to that point over there. I'll set my part lower level to that point on the bottom over there, and now we're all set basically with our home positions, our stock, and our target around the part. And now we're ready to start working. Now I continue working as if I worked before uh, in my regular milling operations. And for this part, I'll just do simple two operations. I'll use the first operation of an HSM doing a contour roughing of the part itself. Whereas I have my geometry, I have my target, and if I show my target, as you can see over here, and my tool, I'll choose my tool. And in this case, I'll use a regular end mill of 10 millimeters in diameter. My coordinate system boundaries, in this particular case, I prefer using auto create outer outer silhouette. The reason for that is that many times the part itself, the view that I have, is not exactly square like they have right now, but sometimes it's actually very odd shape. So I want to get the exact outer silhouette shape of the part itself, so this is what I'll use in many of the cases. And if I did show of my boundary, you'll see that this is the actual boundary that I have in this particular case. My passes, I'll choose to leave 
0.5 millimeters and I'll have a step down of every uh, two millimeters detecting the core areas of the part. I'll simply say save and calculate and as I simulate the part using the solid verify you'll see the tool works around the part just like a regular HSM part milling every single level all the way down to the bottom until the very end of the part itself. Now the next operation that I'll do just a simple another HSM operation and I'll use the option of 3D constant step over using a ball end mill and I'll create a ball end mill of let's say of a diameter of uh, 3 millimeters tool dry boundaries again creates automatic silhouette and I'll do the same thing for my constraint boundaries my passes just so that we can do this quickly I'll have it go every two millimeters and then I'll do a simple save and calculate of the part itself now in my simulation you'll see that it worked exactly on the part just like any normal HSM machining operation as if it was a solid part itself around the entire part now the next thing I'd like to do is actually switch this part I, like, I have a part here that's sort of a revision in this particular case it's an exact revision of the part what I mean by an exact revision is that the part is the same part with a little change in the part itself I can do it um, in a few ways I'll just simply do it right now by right clicking on cam part go into change model reference and in my browse area bring in my second file that I created and simply say okay now in this particular case since the actual build of the part is the exact same place there's no change of position in the part itself all I have to do in this case is simply do calculate all and everything will automatically be updated the only change that was in this part was this particular area over here whereas it machines in that area as well now if I were just to show you the simulation just of that particular operation you'll see and I'll use the wireframe simulation for it right now that it works now inside that area as well because this part has now been revised now sometimes when you import a part a new part or exchanges part it may not necessarily be built based on this uh, previous uh, STL that you're using so not all always is calculating the proper way the best way to do it so what we can always do is simply mark the two operations here, the entire process, and create a template, a process template from this part. And I'll call this, just for argument's sake, I'll call this STL. And I'll include the tool data with my part itself. All I have to do right now is when I create or bring in my new reference model, and let's say in this particular case, I'll take mouse 3 and I'll bring that into my part here itself. You'll note that the part now is a completely different shape altogether and it's even lying in a different position. The stock has rebuilt itself, but I want to reposition my coordinate system. So I'll just have to go back now into my coordinate system, do edit, and in my edit coordinate system, I'll simply put my origin here, my origin is over there, my x direction is over there, and my y direction will be over here as well. Just showing it to you again, x and y, and then I'm set, and now I have 
a new stock, a new target. All I have to do now, in this particular case, I can erase all my operations that I've done here. Don't need them anymore. And I'll simply go into operations, add operations from process template, and choose the STL template that I've created. Simply say OK. And then just go in, make sure my geometry is correct, my constraint boundary is correct. Make sure the same thing in the second operation is done correctly. Having my geometry, my dry boundaries create automatically. Same thing with my constraint boundaries. Even calculate, we're all set. All I have to do right now is just simply run my simulation and I'll use my solid verify simulation. First doing my rough cut around the part itself as we'll go now all the way down to the very bottom. I'm basically working on this part exactly according to the technology that I've chosen. Working on the part and then going to the second operation doing that particular operation there. And as you can see here, we have now the finished project product exactly according to the new STL file that I brought in. And in this particular case, I did not recalculate it. I just simply brought in a process template to complete this operation.